So now that we've done all that, I'm actually going to put a change in. I'm going to rotate those three shapes by 30 degrees. So I'm going to have a variable here, 30 degrees. That's the amount we want to rotate by. And in order to rotate, we're going to want to call GL rotate F. And the first argument is the amount by which we're rotating in degrees. And the next three arguments are the axis about which we're rotating. So I'm going to rotate the trapezoid about the z-axis by angle degrees. And let's also rotate the triangle by the same amount by another call to GL rotate F. Only this time it's going to be about the y-axis. Er, sorry, that was the pentagon, not the triangle. And for the triangle, I'm going to rotate it again by this same amount. Only I'll do it about this weird vector, the 1, 2, 3 vector. That's the axis about which we're rotating. And let's build this project so that we can see what it does. And here we go. These shapes are now rotated a little bit in 3D, which is kind of cool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the camera to the left by 10 degrees so that we see the scene from a little bit of a different angle. So I'm going to have another variable up here, which is the camera angle, and set it to 10. So actually we're going to be using a special trick to do this. Instead of uh, rotating the camera angle, we're actually going to rotate the whole scene backwards. So we rotate by the opposite of the camera angle, right here, about the y-axis. And this is a common trick to use in OpenGL, actually, rotating everything the opposite direction instead of rotating the camera. And once I do that, here we go. Everything looks like it's a little bit to the right because the user is viewing the scene to the left a little bit. Or at least that's what it's supposed to look like. And now, actually, I'm going to take the pentagon and make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to change it to 70% of its original size by calling GL scale F. And I'm going to scale it by 0.7 in the X, Y, and Z directions by this call right here. So let's take a look. We'll build the project and run it. So now this uh, pentagon is a little bit smaller. And that's what the call to GL scale F did. So actually, I'm going to change this camera angle back to zero just so we can see everything better. And finally, we're going to use timers to make these shapes rotating continuously. So we'll actually have some motion in our scene. So right here, I'm going to add a function called update, which is going to be called every 25 milliseconds. And it gets this integer parameter, which I'll explain in just a second. And what we want to do is increase the angle by 2 degrees. And I'm also going to, right here, make it so that if the angle is bigger than 360, we're going to subtract 360 from it, which makes it the same angle, but it's closer to 0. And you don't actually have to do this. You could have an angle of 480, and OpenGL would be just fine with it. But I'm doing this for reasons of floating point precision, which I'm not going to explain exactly, just know that it's good to have angles that are close to zero. So then we have to add a call to glut post redisplay, which tells glut that the scene has changed and that it has to draw it again. If we don't do this, OpenGL or rather glut will will not redisplay or it won't redraw the scene. And finally, a call to glut timer func, which is going to tell glut to call update again in 25 milliseconds. And this zero, that's the value that uh, this value parameter gets. And we are not really using it. We don't really care about it. So I'm just going to make it zero. And finally, I'm going to take this line right here and copy it. And down here at the end of the main function, I'll put a call to GL timer func, so that will call update 
25 milliseconds after the program starts. And now let's take a look at what we have done. What have we created? Let's see. There we go. They're spinning in 3D. Looks kind of cool. It's pretty nifty for just the second lesson. We have some spinning shapes right here. And there we have it. And there's one more thing I'd like to explain, actually. Um, I kind of didn't really go over this last lesson right here where it says GL matrix mode, GL projection. It changes it so that our transformations are actually used for this special projection matrix mode. Um, you don't really need to worry about what it does. It just makes it so that we have 3D perspective. Um, so in the draw scene function, we need to change back to GL model view, which is the normal uh, matrix mode. Um, so this is just used when we're resizing the window. And by the way, this um, this projection matrix mode is sometimes described as the camera angle, which is not accurate. You don't want to use it for the camera angle for a few different reasons. For instance, the lights do not move with this transformation. So we're just going to ignore that little trick or way of doing things because it's the wrong way of doing it. And that's how transformations and timers work.